Good morning, Bone. Morning, Gary. How are you? I'm doing well. A lot of excitement today. Uh, Antonio Alfano, the big defensive lineman out of New Jersey, is going to announce his uh, commitment. It looks like it's between Alabama, Penn State, and Georgia. We know with him being right there in New Jersey, this is a, a huge priority for Penn State, James Franklin, and Georgia had really been in there strong as well. But now it looks like as we sit here this morning that um, Alabama might be the team to beat. What's your uh, feeling? What's the latest? Yeah, you know, that's uh, that's kind of the, the direction that I'm leaning uh, right now. Probably been leaning that way for uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, he visited Alabama earlier this spring. It was his second time to visit Tuscaloosa and um, you know, really hit it off with the coaching staff. Really, really liked defensive line coach, Coach Craig Kulikowski. Um, got a good relationship with uh, Coach Josh Gaddis from uh, – from his prior, uh, you know, time at uh, at Penn State, we knew him pretty well. You know, Penn State was always kind of considered the team to beat there. They were always the favorite for him, and you know, then he started visiting the SEC schools and visited uh, Alabama and Georgia, and, and really liked it a lot uh, down in the South, and uh, you know, really liked those programs a lot. But you know, as we go into today, I think uh, you know, I think it's between Alabama and Penn State. I think Georgia's probably third. It would. It would surprise me if he picked Georgia. I think it would surprise a lot of people if he, if he picked Georgia. So I think it's definitely between Alabama and Penn State. And uh, and I'd give Alabama the edge right now. And um, I think he'll announce for them today. And, um, you know, be a huge, huge addition to uh, to Alabama's class. As, as many know, is uh, obviously one of the best in the country already. Yeah, let me let me ask you about him. I mean, there are you're right. There are some that are saying he is the best defensive lineman in the country. Extremely athletic, 6'4", 285 pounds, can run. Obviously, has the potential to play at over three hundred pounds. Just how good do you think Alfano is? Well, I think he's he's gotten better every single year in high school. I remember when he was a sophomore, um, he really kind of busted on the scene when he was just a. Um, when he was just a freshman, I started hearing about him a little bit. You know, started hearing about this defensive lineman in New Jersey who had a chance to develop into you know, something really special down the road. And and uh, over the course of the last three years, uh, you know, he's really blossomed. I mean, he, he went from 220 pounds to 240 pounds to 260 to now 280 pounds. So he's almost put on about 20 pounds each year since his uh, since his freshman year, and, and been able to uh, you know to maintain his. Uh, his speed, his quickness, and and only gotten better in in, in that regard. Uh, you know, has worked with a lot of really good defensive line coaches um, in his area uh, that have really helped him out a lot. I, mean, I think you know, he's he's actually transferred three different times uh, to three different schools, and I think um, you know I, I asked around. You know, just you always try to find out. Okay, a kid has transferred three different times. He must be some sort of troublemaker. And I think he got in a little bit of trouble early on in, in his high school career. And But I think all that's kind of behind him. And it wasn't anything major. It wasn't anything where people would question uh, recruiting him or not. I think it was just something really small. But um, yeah, but I think he's kind of got his head focused now. He, he's uh, He's been focused on academics and, uh, and um, you know, doing the right things off the field. Uh, but also, uh, you know, working hard and uh, and getting better off the field or on the field as well. But you know, he's a uh, you know, an outstanding football player. Um, yeah, he's, he's gone to some camps this spring and has done extremely well. And uh, and like you said, you know, many people think he he could be the best defensive lineman in the country. And yeah, you know, I know that we uh, you know we have him on rivals as uh, I can't remember exactly where he's ranked. I know he's considered one of the top 10 defensive linemen in the, in the country. And, um, you know, certainly a, uh, a kid that has a chance to be special. And I always tell people, I said, you know, if you're, if you're anywhere between number one in the country and number, let's say 150, uh, then you've been, we're, we're basically saying you've got a great opportunity in the next three to four years to become an NFL first round or second round draft pick. And I, I think that's pretty good good compliment and uh you know it's all projection so you, you never know what may happen we've had a lot of you know we've had some defensive linemen who we've had number one in the country uh you know the number one defensive lineman in the country a couple years in a row you know even though deshaun hand got drafted deshaun hand wasn't an nfl first round draft pick byron cowart uh was a uh, was a number one defensive lineman in the country and uh, obviously we saw him transfer from from auburn but 
you just never know sometimes how kids are going to develop. But, you know, we, ha- we have high expectations for uh, Antonio Alfano, regardless of where he goes. I mean, obviously Penn State uh, has, uh, has produced a lot of great defensive linemen. Georgia, if he ended up going there, produces a lot of great players. But uh, obviously Alabama, uh, the track record in Tuscaloosa, especially um, over the course of the last 10 years with, uh, you know, with so many great players like, you know, uh, Jaron Reed and Aishan Robinson and, and uh, Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen and Dalvin Thomas and uh, Marcel Darius. You know, the list just kind of goes on and on. And then you, you throw in uh, Coach Craig Kulikowski, who you know, many consider is you know, one of the top two or three defensive line coaches in America. Um, you know, developed so many top guys uh, at Missouri and uh, you know, had, a, had a great two years down at Miami, really kind of transformed uh, that defensive line down in Miami into a, uh, you know, just obviously Miami known as a, a powerhouse program, but uh, most people realize they fell off pretty big over the last, uh, over the last 10 years. And uh, he and Mark Rick, uh, you know, they, they, they did a really good job down there. That announcement today from Alfano coming up at three o'clock Eastern, two o'clock central, uh, anything can happen in recruiting, but your prediction is Alabama? My prediction is Alabama. Um, you know, as you said, anything can happen, and and obviously today is not National Signing Day, so he will not be signing that letter of intent. But uh, but he's taken his visits and he's kind of enjoyed the process. And listen, these schools are going to continue to recruit him. There's there's no doubt about it. And uh, and we'll keep an eye on and make you know see if he's going to end up taking any more official visits down the road, or if he only. You know, sometimes they, they do decide to take some official visits, but you know a lot of times they just decide to shut it all down and uh, and stick with it. Um, you know Alabama's had some great players, especially you know, I think it uh, you know it helped Alabama a little bit having some kids from New Jersey taking in the NFL draft uh, uh, this past uh, this past April. So uh, you know I'm sure that sticks out to him a little bit as well. No doubt about it. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, what's on the horizon. Of course, it's camp time coming up in June, and that is just huge. Alabama already with 12 commitments for 2019, hoping to get a 13th uh, this afternoon from Alfano. What else uh, is on the horizon that could uh, could be happening, let's say, in the next uh, few weeks in regards to Alabama? Who are some guys that you feel like are uh, close to maybe pulling the trigger for the Crimson Tide? Well, as many know, it's, it's- Spring evaluation period. The coaches have been, you know, at really ever since uh, the A Day game, coaches have been on the road. They've been evaluating a ton of players uh, all over the country. I mean, they these, these coaches. I mean, that, that's their life during the spring. As mm-hmm. soon as, as soon as the uh, spring game ends, they are on the road and they're hitting, you know, every top place in the country. And you know, they're visiting kids that they they haven't offered kids that that aren't on anybody's radar. They're they're making sure that they're not missing anything. No st- stone is left unturned uh, during the spring evaluation season. They're they're trying to make sure that that they get the right guys on campus this summer. Um, if those guys are the top players in the country, or if they're considered top tier targets for the Crimson Tide, or if they're kids that Alabama just wants to see in camp and see if those guys. Uh, you know, may stand out again. I remember a few years ago, uh, the wide receiver came to Alabama's camp in July. He, you know, he was kind of a known kid, but not really on Alabama's radar. He came to camp, and and I remember, you know, this name. I'm sure a lot of your your listeners know Chris Carter, the NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver, gives me a call, and he says, he says Andrew, he goes, there's this kid that just he was the most impressive wide receiver I saw uh, at Alabama's camp today. He'll be starting for Alabama next fall. And I said, well, does he have an offer from Alabama yet? He said, no, not yet. They're going to offer him today. And I said, okay, well, they're going to offer him today, but uh, you're already saying that he's going to start at Alabama next year. He said, oh, I guarantee he'll be the best receiver that ever came through Alabama. I said, okay, whatever. He's just, yeah, he's an NFL Hall of Fame wide receiver. I should probably listen to him, but he also loves some wide receivers. So uh, we'll see if that, that happens. Well, about, a, about an hour later, I get a text message, hey, Alabama just offered uh, this kid. His name's Amari Cooper. So, uh, you know, <laughs> stuff like that's going to happen. Um, you know, kids are going to emerge at summer camp, and Alabama has uh, all their camps in June this year. We've, we've seen it kind of spread out uh, all the way up until this year. We've seen it spread out where they have uh, all, two camps in June, two camps in July, an O-line, D-line camp, and a high school camp 
uh, each month. Uh, Alabama will also have a special teams camp. I believe that's on June the 2nd. But uh, a lot of kids are going to be coming in for, uh, for camp. A lot of kids are going to be coming in to visit. And guess what? There's a lot of kids that are considered, you know, top-tier targets, but Alabama still wants to see them. Alabama still wants to see uh, them uh, strap it up and, and do one-on-one and also be coached by them. Alabama wants to see these guys and see if they're able to be coached by them because you know, they, they, don't, they don't hold back any punches. They go full steam uh, at these camps. And, you know, even, you know, you could probably ask any, uh, you know, 12-year-old uh, how the camps are. And guess what? It's just as hard as, uh, as going out to uh, fall practice with Alabama. I mean, they, they push, push every person to the limits out there. So they really want to see if these, uh, you know, especially these kids who are 17, 18 years old, if they can really handle being coached by uh, by Alabama, because they know they're good, but you know, can they be coached by them? And uh, you know, do they fit the program? Andrew Bone wrapping up with us here on the Gary Harris Show on the Bud Light Hotline. Follow him on Twitter at Andrew J Bone, recruiting reporter for Rivals.com and Bama Insider. I want to ask you about something that I got a question on on our television show earlier this week with Rodney Ortider Insider TV. That it did uh, it did strike me as as unusual. Uh, Alabama already in this class, and they're both in-state schools, have offered an offensive tackle and a quarterback from the same school. Of course, Pierce Quick and Paul Tyson from Hewitt Trustful, a tackle and a quarterback, and Amari Kite and Talia Tongavailoa, a tackle and a quarterback from Thompson High School. Uh, how unusual is that, Bone? It's unusual. You, you don't normally see it. I mean, you know, we, we see it sometimes at some uh, – you know, some elite programs, uh, kind of, you know, kind of throughout the country. Um, you know, you look at uh, like you know, Mater Day last year had JT Daniels who signed with uh, with with USC, who's one of the top quarterbacks in the country, and and also Tommy Brown uh, who signed with Alabama. Um, you know, that, that was you know just a rare occurrence that you see uh, that you see something like that, and and it's extremely rare uh, to Birmingham area schools that have um, that have that. You know, with a uh, you know a guy like uh, Talia Tonga Viola and Amari Kite, and then um, and then Paul Tyson Pierce Quick, it, it's extremely rare and, and something you don't see you know very often. So uh, you know, obviously, uh, it worked out pretty well for Alabama uh, in that regard because you have you know, those guys are two, especially the offensive linemen. Those guys are two really elite players. I mean, guys that uh, both of them are going to finish in the Rivals 100, and which is a you know, it's an unbelievable year in the state of Alabama because you're going to have three offensive linemen in the state of Alabama when, when you toss in Clay Webb from Oxford as rivals 100 players and, and you know, three offensive linemen, top 100 players in the country. That's just, uh, you know, that's remarkable. And then, uh, you know, with Talia uh, at Thompson and then Paul Tyson at Hewitt, you know, those guys are uh, fantastic. And, you know, earlier this week we saw both of those guys get invited to the uh, – to the Elite Eleven Finals this uh, this summer, so I think that's uh, you know that's huge you know for the state of Alabama and also for uh, you know for the Alabama uh, Crimson Tide having two of their quarterback both of their quarterback commitments heading to the Elite Eleven Finals. Yeah, it really really is. All right, Bone, I know you'll be on top of the Alfano commitment today at two o'clock Central, and if folks want to uh, to f- track you and, and keep up with that and all the other recruiting news, how do they do it? Yeah, you know, please follow me uh, at my Twitter handle, Andrew J Bone, and uh, you can send an alert on there. Um, so whenever I uh, I post a tweet or post the announcement, uh, it'll come straight to your phone. But uh, you're gonna have plenty of coverage of the announcement on BamaInsider.com. Breakdown of uh, you know if he ends up committing to Alabama, a breakdown of kind of what it means for the recruiting class, um, you know, in terms of numbers and and what kind of impact he can have. Uh, for Alabama down and uh, you know down the road, so uh, so definitely stay tuned and uh, uh, for Alabama fans, hopefully it'll be a good day for everyone. Yeah, it'll be a great start to the weekend. Thanks a lot, Bone. All right, Gary, thank you.